Hi everybody and welcome to exercise 2 on page 42 of the workbook. Let's work through this question together. Um, what is this asking us? So it's telling us that we're standing at a particular point on a hill and they're giving us the equation of the hill in the form z equals 5y minus x squared minus y squared. I want to start by pointing out that we can think of this z in the alternate form f of xy. So this is a function f of xy equals 5y minus x squared minus y squared. Think of that as just a height function. It's telling us how high we are on this hill. Okay, so let's look at the first part of this question. So they're saying if we choose to climb in the direction of steepest ascent, um, what is our what is our initial rate of ascent relative to the horizontal distance? Okay, and kind of the key there is that steepest ascent, direction of the steepest ascent. We can find that direction of maximum increase by finding the gradient, so that's kind of our first task here, is to take this function and to find its gradient. Okay, so we have our formula sitting up here, so first thing we need is the derivative in the x direction, which is going to be negative 2x, I'll put an i on that. All of the y terms go to 0. And then the derivative with respect to y, we're going to get 5 minus 2y. Okay, and that x squared term is going to go to 0. Okay, and remember our point of interest is happening when x and y are both 1. So that's where we're interested in finding the value of the gradient. Okay, so let's calculate the gradient at 1, 1. Substitute in 1 and 1 for x and y, we're going to get negative 2i. And let's see, 5 minus 2 times 1 is 3j. Okay, so we have just found the gradient, and the gradient, remember, is the direction of steepest ascent. Okay, just the direction of steepest increase in our function, which in our case is an increase in height. Okay, but what they want is the initial rate of descent, or I'm sorry, ascent, the initial rate of ascent. So they're really asking us not for the direction, but for the magnitude. Okay, so we can find how fast we're going up by just finding the magnitude of this vector that we just found. All right, so we're going to get the square root of negative 2 squared plus 3 squared. Okay, and that's going to give us square root of 13. Okay, that should be our answer, but it would be nice to have units here. What, what, what are we really measuring here? Well, what's kind of interesting in this problem is that x, y, and z are all measured in meters. You can think of x and y as measuring horizontal distances on the ground, and z is measuring how high we are on the hill. So this square root of 13 kind of has some strange units. You can think of it as... The units of z, which are um, meters vertically ascended um, over meters horizontally moved. So one way to express this would be to say square root of 13 meters ascended for each horizontal meter moved. If you imagine kind of looking down into the xy plane, you're sort of measuring how fast am I going up relative to how fast I'm moving over the xy plane below me. Okay. So there's our answer to part A. Okay, and then part B, let's see. They're asking, if we decide to go straight to the northwest, will, be, will we be ascending or descending and at what rate? Okay, well, let's start with just a sketch first. And it's going to be a sketch of the xy plane. So again, every part of this problem is concerning this point where x and y are 1 and 1. So that's our starting point. And if we move straight to the northwest, one way to think of that is that we're going to go one unit to the left and one unit up. That would be northwest in our case. Okay, so our vector v that describes the direction that we're moving would look like this. Okay, and because we moved one unit to the left and one unit up, its component should be negative i plus j. That's where it's pointing. Okay, so the rate of descent then in this particular direction is just asking us to calculate a directional derivative. Okay, and again, 
two things that we need to calculate a directional derivative are the gradient, okay, which we already calculated in part a, and a unit vector in the direction that we want to move. Okay, so we'll take the vector that we just calculated and turn it into a unit vector. Okay, and we've kind of been calling this u, so let's do that again. So b is negative i plus j, and we'll divide it by its length, which would be the square root of negative 1 squared plus 1 squared. Okay, so do the algebra there. We're going to get negative 1 over the square root of 2i plus 1 over the square root of 2j. That denominator is the square root of 2. Okay, and so the directional derivative, which is going to measure our rate of change, okay, is going to be the gradient dotted with the u that we just got. Okay, so the gradient, we already calculated again. That's sitting up here in part a. So negative 2i plus 3j. We're going to dot that with the u that we just wrote down. Okay, do the calculations, and let's see. We're going to get negative 2 times negative 1 over root 2. That's 2 over root 2. And then 3 times 1 over root 2 is 3 over root 2. Okay, and we could, we could write that as 5 over root 2, or we could get an approximate decimal. I'm going to do the, the decimal approximation. So we'll get 3.54. Okay, there's our answer. And so can we answer the, the rest of the question? Are we ascending or descending? Well, we got a positive number, so that's telling us that our function is increasing. And it's also giving us an indication of rate. We already noticed in part A that our units are kind of weird. So um, we're talking about 3.54 meters of elevation gain for each horizontal meter that we move. for each horizontal meter moved. OK, and there's part B. All right, and then we come to the probably the most interesting question out of all of these. If you decide to maintain your altitude, in what directions can you go? OK, well, what does maintaining your altitude mean? Well, it's like saying that your, your function is not changing at all. We want the height to remain constant, which means that the, the rate of change of the height should be zero. So a way of rephrasing this question is we're trying to, we're trying to find a, a vector u such that the derivative in that direction is zero. That would be saying that we're maintaining our altitude because our function is not changing at all. Okay, so we need to take the directional derivative and set it equal to zero. Okay, so the directional derivative consists of a gradient. Okay, dotted with this unit vector u, which we don't know yet. So I'm going to call its components u1 and u2. We're trying to figure out what u1 and u2 might be. And we're setting that equal to zero. Okay, take that and actually do the dot product and you're going to get negative 2u1 plus 3u2 and that's going to be set equal to zero. Okay, and so the question is, what possible solutions are there for u1 and u2? If we can figure that out, we know what the vector u is and what direction we need to move in. Okay, well this is kind of weird because we've got one equations one equation and two variables, which means that there are actually many solutions to this. Okay, so let's see if we can maybe pick out a couple of solutions out of, out of infinitely many here. Okay, and I'm going to get a little sneaky on, on, on you here and just pick a value for one of the variables. Okay, well, if u1 is equal to 3, that's going to turn this first term into a negative 6. Can you tell me what u2 would have to be to make this a true statement? We have a negative 6 in the first term. We need a 6 in the second term, and we can get that by making u2 equal to 2. Okay, so that's one solution to this equation, which implies that the vector u equals 
3i plus 2j, that's the u1 and the u2, that would be one possible answer. That's one direction we could move in that would give us zero slope. Okay, let's, let's find one more. Okay, we could also make u1 equal negative 3. Okay, my, my reason for choosing 3 or negative 3 is just it makes it easy to figure out what u2 has to be. Okay, well, if u1 is negative 3, then this time the first term is positive 6. So we need to make u2 negative 2 to make that statement true. Okay, and so this time we're going to get negative 3i minus 2j. Okay, those are two possible directions that we can move. Okay, and in both of those directions, we would discover that our altitude is not changing if we move away from 1, 1 in that direction.